For the first time in 30 years, China is not setting a goal for economic growth this year. Top politicians also asked all levels of the government to cut spending. Beijing is accelerating the process of its new legislation on Hong Kong. Hong Kongers worry this could lead to an end of the city's autonomy and freedom. One lawmaker speaks with us about the despair and string of hope. In an unusual move, Chinese leaders didn't use the word peaceful when talking about ruling Taiwan, a shift from its standard practice for the past decades. China's hard-hit northeastern province Jilin ramps up its control and prevention measures against the virus. And China's Luckin Coffee sees its share prices plunge on the U.S. stock exchange. Banks who loaned money to the company are now filing court orders against it. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. China is dropping its annual growth target this year for the first time since it began publishing such goals in 1990. Our reporter Juliet Song looks at that and other economic markers out of China as the year's most important political event ramps up. For the first time in the past 30 years, China has removed its annual economic growth target. China's most important political event of the year, known as the two sessions, has begun. Speaking at the event, Premier Li Keqiang explained why the country's GDP target was dropped. He said it's because China will face factors that are difficult to predict due to uncertainty regarding the pandemic and the world economic and trade environment. China's economy has taken a big hit from the CCP virus pandemic. Authorities say it shrank almost 7 percent in the first quarter, the first contraction in decades. The U.S.-based Institute of International Finance estimates China's total debt hit almost 320 percent of GDP in this year's first quarter. That's a near 20 percent increase compared to quarter four in 2019. Li also warned that the pressure is on to improve the country's unemployment situation, adding that the government has adjusted this year's job creation goals as a result. Stabilizing employment, ensuring people's livelihood, resolutely winning the battle against poverty and strive to achieve the goal of building a well-off society. China has set a target to create about 9 million urban jobs this year, its lowest goal since 2013. This year, we must prioritize. The urban survey unemployment rate will be around 6%. The director of a Chinese financial research institute says China's actual unemployment rate is around 20 percent. His report has since been removed online. Both the premier and the minister of finance are asking all levels of the regime to reduce spending. This year, Li's work report is said to be the shortest of its kind in 40 years. Beijing's decision to push the controversial law in Hong Kong was met with strong criticism from the U.S. and others in the international community. China's new regulation on Hong Kong is sparking a response from the international community. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo called China's plan disastrous, saying it's a death knell for the high degree of autonomy Beijing promised for Hong Kong. He also said that the new law will impact the U.S.'s assessment of Hong Kong's special status. The U.S. treats Hong Kong differently from China in trade and commerce. The special status exempts Hong Kong exports from tariffs imposed by the U.S. on Chinese goods during the trade war. If its special status is revoked, it would have a huge impact on the over 1,000 U.S. firms operating in the Asian city. Pompeo ended the statement saying, We stand with the people of Hong Kong, and Congress is also reportedly taking action. The Wall Street Journal said on Thursday U.S. senators are introducing a bipartisan bill that would punish Chinese officials and entities who implement the law. The journal says banks that do business with such entities will also face sanctions. In a much softer tune than the U.S., Britain, Canada, and Australia issued a joint statement on Friday saying, quote, We are deeply concerned at proposals for introducing legislation related to national security in Hong Kong. Making such a law on Hong Kong's behalf without the direct participation of its people, legislature, or judiciary would clearly undermine the principle of one country, two systems. Hong Kong's last British governor, Lord Chris Patton, said in an interview with the BBC that the UK should tell China its proposed law is outrageous. The former governor also called the law a comprehensive assault on the city's autonomy, rule of law, and fundamental freedoms. This year's two sessions is the shortest in history. It's the CCP's most important political meeting of the year. Despite all the precautions and prevention measures, the question on everyone's mind is still, will the virus attack Beijing? 
Two sessions representatives are required to self-quarantine for 14 days before they can go to Beijing, but it seems not everyone has done it. Provincial-level sessions in two provinces just finished on May 12th. Their participants then left for Beijing. They did not have enough time to self-isolate for 14 days before they left. Also on May 18th, the delegation from Heilongjiang province, where the outbreak is serious right now, had a meeting before heading to Beijing. The quality of the virus test is also questionable. One leading Chinese medical expert has admitted they only have a 30 to 50 percent accuracy rate. Many test kits sold to other countries were returned to China because of their poor quality. And often it takes several tests before an infected person tests positive. On May 21st, the northeastern Chinese province of Jiling escalated its prevention and control measures against the CCP virus again. Right now, there are two high-risk areas and three medium-risk areas in the province. Under the new measures, everyone who's returned from a high-risk area since April 1st has to stay at a quarantine center for 14 days and then spend another seven days in isolation at home. If someone returns from a medium-risk area, they need to stay at home for 14 days. This May 18th video shows people from a high-risk area lining up to be tested. There's so many people, it continued into the night. Changchun City is in this province but isn't a high or medium-risk area. But a citizen from Changchun told us it's very hard to find a job and many families are struggling to make ends meet. He slammed the Chinese authorities for promising $2 billion to the World Health Organization, but gave Chinese people virtually nothing. China's Lucking Coffee is in serious trouble. Its share price fell nearly 30 percent on May 21st and 36 percent the day before that. The coffee chain admitted to financial fraud on April 7th. On Tuesday, the Nasdaq Stock Exchange told Lucking it would be delisted. It plans to appeal the ruling, and until then, it will remain listed. Its share price has plummeted from $50 in January to $2 on Thursday. Some banks even lent the company CEO over half a billion dollars using his lucking shares as security. Now they're taking legal action to make him liquidate his company to pay them back. The U.S. government announced on Thursday it's made progress in implementing the Phase 1 trade deal with China. U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer said in a statement, China has worked with the U.S. to implement measures that will provide greater access to U.S. producers and exporters to China's growing food and agricultural market. Despite tensions between the two countries, Beijing said Friday they're working to implement the deal with the U.S. China recently updated its list of U.S. export facilities, meaning more types of American food and agricultural products can be exported there than ever before. China's top politician left out the word peaceful when talking about Beijing wanting to rule Taiwan in what the world power calls reunification. It's a deviation from the standard phrase China's used for decades. In an unusual move, Beijing changed the way it talks about Taiwan, an island that China sees as a breakaway province. At the nation's most important annual political meeting, China's premier dropped the word peaceful when talking about China's so-called reunification with Taiwan. It's a shift away from its standard practice. For the past four decades, Chinese leaders have always used peaceful when referencing reunification. Beijing wants to rule Taiwan, extending its totalitarian regime, but Taiwan is an independent, democratic nation. The island complains of increased Chinese military harassment following the onset of the CCP virus pandemic. Chinese fighter jets and naval vessels regularly approach Taiwan in what Beijing describes as routine drills. Following threats from China, Taiwan announced it will boost defense spending. China stepped up its defense budget as well. This year, Beijing's planned defense budget is almost $180 billion. Beijing's State of the Nation work report, delivered at the annual meeting of China's parliament, didn't mention much about Taiwan compared with last year. Taiwan's central news agency reports a politics expert saying one reason could be the hit Beijing has taken from the pandemic and its trade war with the U.S. Its priority now is bolstering its economy. Another expert said instead Beijing is taking a hard stance on Hong Kong this time. China plans to pass the controversial law for Hong Kong. The move would be a huge blow to the city's autonomy. And the expert says the law doesn't only target Hong Kong, but acts as an example for Taiwan. 
Amid the deepest recession since World War II, German car makers are increasingly relying on the Chinese market. What are some of the risks that come with this dependence? NTD's Germany correspondent Christian Watchin has the story. This week, new data showed car sales slumping dramatically across Europe. Italy and the UK saw the biggest drops of 97%, and Germany's sales tumbled by about 60%. Following weeks of closed factories, most of Europe's car companies restarted production this month, but well below normal capacity. Car makers across Europe are bracing for a tough year. In the second quarter, the economic impact of the corona pandemic is hitting our business hard, especially in important markets like Europe and the United States. The outlook for 2020, ladies and gentlemen, is gloomy. For German car makers like BMW, there's one ray of hope. China. The market there seems to have rebounded. After Chinese sales fell almost 90 percent in February, in April BMW sold almost 15 percent more cars than the year before. For German car companies, the Chinese market has become indispensable, maybe now more than ever. While European and U.S. markets are saturated, China is in little danger of running out of road. Since people are now nervous about using public transportation, Chinese consumers have another reason to buy a car. German luxury brands especially benefit. They dominate over 90 percent of the high-end car market in China. China is the most important market for the German automotive industry. In terms of production, uh, German car makers produced more cars in China last year than they produced at home. The Chinese market contributes almost half of German car companies' profits. Volkswagen, the world's biggest car maker, now sells 40 percent of its cars in China, more than anywhere else. VW was the first foreign company to enter the Chinese market in the 1980s, and no other company like it is as closely entwined with the CCP. Some observers are concerned German car makers are increasingly beholden to what the Chinese regime demands. Bernd Sisema, former editor-in-chief of Germany's biggest business daily, called this dependence the China Trap. In 2019, he described a scenario of an economic crisis hitting China. In response, he said the CCP could try to prevent company closures by favoring its domestic car makers foreign companies would then lose out. Political blackmail is another risk that could come with such dependence. In December of last year, the Chinese ambassador to Germany issued what many understood as a threat. It came amid heightened pressure on the German government to decide on Chinese telecom giant Huawei's role in the 5G rollout in Germany. If Germany were to make a decision that led to Huawei's exclusion from the German market, there will be consequences. See, last year, 28 million cars were sold in China. Seven million of those were German. Amid the virus crisis, the car industry is increasingly rethinking its exposure to China. Car makers and suppliers will think about relocation of certain production facilities to be not dependent too much on maybe one or just a few production sites in only a few or in only one country. Most German car companies still bet on China and want better market access and more legal certainty for investment. Reporting by Christian Watchin, NTD News, Berlin. At the White House, flags are flying at half-mast in memory of the more than 95,000 Americans who lost their lives to the virus. This will also be the scene at government buildings throughout the U.S. President Trump issued the order to mark the loss of life in the pandemic to date. The virus continues to spread across the country, with over one and a half million confirmed cases in the U.S. Flags will remain at half-staff until noon on Monday to commemorate the Memorial Day holiday. As the country grapples over reopening schools this fall, some doctors have started speaking out about the mental health risks of a prolonged lockdown. A doctor from Seattle Children's Hospital says that waiting on a vaccine to reopen schools may cause more harm than good, especially for younger children since they rely on human interaction for their brain development. Pediatrician and child health behavior and development expert Dr. Dimitri Christakis says he's concerned about the lasting impacts the lockdown may have on children. You have to keep in mind for very young children in particular, um, they're born with their brains not fully developed. They, they spend an enormous amount of effort and energy early on establishing uh, the architecture of their minds based on the world they're living in. And, and essential to that world is human interaction. NPR interviewed a California parent who said her young child started to make frightening comments after the lockdown began. She explained that her five-year-old has said things like, I don't care if I die. And Christakis says the longer kids are stuck at home, the more severe the effects. 
So waiting on a vaccine, which Dr. Anthony Fauci says probably won't be ready when school restarts in the fall, may cause more harm than good. If parents are waiting for that level of assurance, their kids would be out of school for two and a half, three, maybe more years. And that will have lasting implications for their kids, for our kids, for society in general. He's referring to mental health issues like increased anxiety, digital addiction, and obesity. So he says reopening schools in the fall is crucial to minimizing these impacts. Melina Weiskup, NTD News. And Dr. Chris Takis says the National Academy of Sciences is pulling together experts from different fields to discuss how to handle getting kids back into schools. He's hopeful that they'll recommend reopening schools in the next eight weeks. The Bronx Bombers may not play in Yankee Stadium this summer, but you'll be able to see a drive-in movie in the parking lot. While Major League Baseball's 2020 season remains up in the air, there's still a good reason to drive to the Bronx, the Uptown Drive-In. A New York hospitality group is planning to turn Yankee Stadium's largest parking lot into a drive-in movie theater. The events will range from movie screenings to stand-up comedy to karaoke. Car-side food service will be explored so that attendees won't have to line up outside their vehicles to pick up food. To promote social distancing, cars will be parked 10 feet apart, and there will be a limit to 200 vehicles for each event. Organizers hope to keep prices affordable, and first responders and healthcare workers can get in free. People are getting restless from staying at home for months on end. But some in New York are taking advantage of the easing of lockdown restrictions as the temperature warms up. In the U.S. and abroad, stay-at-home orders have given rise to a longing for the outdoors. And that desire has grown even more intense with the arrival of summer. That's why people have taken to Coney Island Beach in New York and all the fresh air and sunshine it has to offer. I feel very comfortable. Nobody's around. It's a nice, beautiful day. Got to get out and get some air. You know, as my grandkids, they want to come to see because it's a long time, three, three months already sitting home. So they want to go out to just walk a little bit. Some are concerned that lifting lockdowns may lead to a second wave of infections. But others say going outside, especially to the beach, should be encouraged. It's fresh air. You know, uh, I'm an Aquarian, so I love the water. And uh, it's very, very healthy. If you look at all the... Uh, people on the rocks. It's just the greatest place to be at. New York City has allowed certain beaches, including Coney Island, to open for Memorial Day. But activities like swimming, sports and group gatherings won't be allowed. In today's business news, meats for this year's Memorial Day cookouts will be more expensive due to supply chain disruptions and higher demand. And a lack of car parts out of Mexico is delaying GM's ability to produce. Burgers and hot dogs from Memorial Day cookouts will cost more this year. Grocery prices have been going up. It's because of supply chain disruptions and higher demand from people eating at home during the CCP virus pandemic. Meat has especially come under price pressure. General Motors will maintain only one shift of workers instead of two at their truck assembly plants in Michigan, Indiana and Mexico because of a lack of parts from Mexico. The Detroit automaker resumed production on Monday after suspending operations in March. But Mexican auto parts production is only beginning to slowly start work again this week. GM will launch a second shift next week, but only at its Lansing Delta Township plant. Hong Kong's stock market fell more than 5% on Friday, as Beijing moves to impose draconian new laws on the territory. It raises fears of a revival of the civil unrest that brought chaos to the financial hub for much of last year. Hong Kong's key benchmark index lost 1,349 points, leading losses in Asian markets and recording its largest daily percentage drop since July 2015. Burberry said the luxury fashion industry could take some time to recover from the virus pandemic, as the company reported a 27 percent loss in comparable sales in the quarter. 60 percent of its retail stores have been closed. The company says it has pulled its final dividend and would review future payouts at the end of its 2021 financial year. The U.K. government announces mandatory self-isolation for almost all travelers coming from overseas, and Brazil had to find new places to bury their dead as the CCP virus death toll keeps rising. Britain will introduce a quarantine for travelers arriving from abroad, including British citizens. Those who breach the quarantine in England could be fined over $1,000, and spot checks will be carried out. 
The leader of Russia's southern region of Chechnya is suspected to have the virus. He's receiving treatment in a Moscow hospital, but Chechen authorities have not confirmed or denied the reports. Freshly dug graves in Sao Paulo reveal the sheer scale of crisis that Brazilian officials are bracing themselves for. Brazil became the country with the third highest number of confirmed cases globally earlier this week. Images of corpses on the streets of Ecuador have motivated a Colombian businessman to design an unusual and sad invention, hospital beds that can be converted to coffins. He hopes his invention could prevent similar scenarios from happening in other countries. We previously reported on an April study that found three types of the CCP virus. We've had viewers reach out and ask us for more information. The Cambridge study is titled Phylogenetic Network Analysis of SARS-CoV-2 Genomes. It was published in April by Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. It studied the first 160 complete viral genomes from the earliest patients across the world. It then mapped the family tree of the genomes. The genomes are categorized into three distinct types, A, B, and C. Type A is considered the root of the outbreak since it's the most similar to the bat virus. Among the 44 samples of type A, 16 are from mainland China. Of the 16, two from Wuhan and four from Guangdong carry the ancestral genomes. One from both Hong Kong and Taiwan, nine are from other Asian countries and carry some mutated version of A. Another nine are from America, also carrying mutated versions of A. Two of the American patients are reported to have lived in Wuhan. Five are from Australia and three from Europe. Type B is mutated from A. Among the 93 cases, 58 are from China, 16 from other Asian countries, 8 from the U.S., 3 from Canada and Mexico, 7 from Europe, and 1 from Australia. Type C, daughter of B, was most common in Europe, 11 out of 23 seen in early patients from France, Italy, Sweden, and England. Of the rest, six are from Asia, two from Australia, and one each from Taiwan, Hong Kong, the U.S., and Brazil. Experts tell us that since type A is the root of B and C, and six cases from mainland China carry the ancestral genome of type A, we can trace all the cases back to China. Here at China In Focus, we dedicate ourselves to bringing you truthful, unbiased reporting. Don't forget to like and subscribe for the latest updates, and see you tomorrow.